I mean, we're doing it. Sometimes it's a genuine. We're doing it. We're doing it. Whatever. We're doing it. Hey, everybody. I'm Kyle we Roosevelt. Welcome this. back to Make Me Smart. Making today make sense on a Friday. I don't know. What, what is this with my hair? What is that? Okay, so. Well, are you having a hair thing? Yeah. You just <laughs> go for the scrunchie. <laughs> <laughs> Go for the scrunchie. Uh, I'm Molly Wood. The reason bad. that we are talking about how each of us looks is because it is the yes. once a week time when we're actually like, oh, hey, you, you have a face mm, and not just yeah. a voice. It is happy hour Friday. Thank goodness it's Friday. Also known as yeah. Economics on Tap. The live stream is up and running. Hello, friends. Jeffrey Maine says you're rocking the Superman curl, which I think is a yes, nice, way to, uh, yeah. nice way to approach yeah. that. Me Superman and, curl. Me and Clark Kent. That's right. Get Kai a scrunch stat. Uh, Derek, yeah. congratulations. Good thinking. Enjoy the club soda and lime. Uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm a little unexpected today because some friends what? came over. Well, some friend, my pod came over for my birthday and left a bunch of weird drinks in my fridge. So I'm having a oh, so high noon vodka and soda. Oh, in a can. Mango in, in a can. In a can. One hundred calories. I expect this to be disgusting oh, to be clear it's gonna be gross let's find it's out totally gross should have brought two just because oh god <laughs> and now you're stuck with it it smells have like you if you my... mix a little skunk in with some mango <laughs> with like sock water <laughs> i'm i'm telling you you have to get one of those little dormitory fridges put it in there and just keep your favorite beverages in there and then you will i really do i don't know why i haven't done that yet yeah. you're, you're so right yeah. okay it is by it next is, week it is a brainstorm I'm going to yeah. have a little fridge. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. true. Uh, there you go. Straight from Huntington huh. Beach, by the way. Uh, Beachwood Citraholic beer for me this afternoon. Very nice little beverage. Set it against the, the hot toddy. Citraholic, yes. It's a kind of a hot. That's good. That means, hot, that means does that mean you're feeling better? Mm hmm. Kimberly yeah, Adams, sorry, it tastes like college. I was swallowing my beer. <laughs> Understood. Oh, uh, your God face bless is gin and tonic. Why does Kai know what sock water tastes like? <laughs> Oh, we're just two guessing. Things. Number one, number one, I've had coconut water, and number two, I've had cucumber water, and both of those taste like what I imagine uh, socks taste like if you put them in water. Truly, gross, <laughs> gross. <laughs> okay, that's how right. I know. Cucumber water? You think that cucumber water? No, this oh, tastes God. like sock water. It's, yes, cucumber water is like a spa. No. Anyway, we're it literally off topic, smells like pickles. Like, why would you have a mango? Like beverage that smells like pickles. Get a little pickle uh, on the nose. All right. Well, this is going to be fun. <laughs> little Brian. The Brian <laughs> is present. Uh, a little Brian. Okay, it's, yeah, it's Brian, it's Brian forward. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, let us get into it because, you know, we tend to get verbose on a Friday afternoon. How, how much do you love the Kimberly's here, by the way? I love that. Um, I just love it. Kimberly is the yeah, best. Yeah. She supports yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Back from vacation. Working for me on Monday, by the way. I don't know who was working for you, but. Uh, I know. So the great. He's working for me. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's do some news. Uh, and uh, I will start because I've got a can you freaking believe it item. Yet again, Russia appears to be hacking American companies and also the U.S. government. The experts believe, and this comes from Microsoft, and it's their system that got hacked. They should know that Russian actors have somehow mm -hmm. infiltrated an email system used by a U.S. aid and a U.S. aid agency, excuse me, and then used that to send out emails to companies that that and other government agencies that that agency interacts with, and it planted malware and let access into those computers. And here we go again. I think the really interesting part of this is not the technical stuff, but is the fact that after Solar Winds, President Biden. Uh, took some action, took, you know, small proportion to action and said, listen, I don't want to ratchet things up and I don't want to escalate things. And the Russians said, we're going to escalate this, you son of a gun. Yes. Uh, and yep. and that's, that's, we're in a cyber, you know, I hate this phrase tit for tat because it's lazy, but, but that's where we are. And that's not good. In addition, I'm to not even sure we're tatting. Is yeah, we're thing. not. We're not. That's right. We're not tatting. Yeah, we're not even tatting. I mean, this is sort of like it's actually somewhat reminiscent of also like the Democrats' attempts to reach across the aisle and create bipartisanship with a Republican Party oh, that's clearly don't. I was not happening. Talk about that right? Today, but I can't. The yeah. metaphor yeah. 
is so, yeah. but I'm just saying like these things seem to be similar in, in the way that they're being carried out, which is like one side is saying right. like, you know what, we're just going to do this the way that we always have. And we're going to keep it normal and yeah. we're going to like be cool and we don't want to escalate. And then the other side right. is like, oh, we already escalated to the moon and we intend yep. to continue doing so. And we're getting yeah. our butts kicked like Russia is. And just to be clear, this is yeah. what's happening as recently as last week. This is not like a thing that we just found out about that was going on, you know, yep. in yep. the past. This is like right now, since whatever baby tat we decided to deliver in response yeah. to the solar winds hack, which apparently did nothing. Yeah, yeah. And, we're in a, we're in a Microsoft, real one sided war here. <laughs> right. According to Microsoft, these these attacks and hacks are still ongoing as we speak. Uh, yeah, I can't talk about the Senate and Republicans and Democrats without getting really, really angry and and deeply yeah. despairing. So I, I need not to. I need not to. Yeah, same. So, and I'm yeah. just going to say that I'm in the exact same boat, actually, about the lady who, uh, you know what, actually, I'm going to get to this by way of one of my news items, which is that I subscribe to... <laughs> Say no to Ladies and gentlemen, G's Mollywood. Here we go. Newsletter. <laughs> exactly. I know. Like, yeah. whoa, whoa, hold on. I'm just going to produce this myself yeah. in a better way so mm -hmm. that it won't sound like such a non sequitur, even though it kind of is. So I subscribe to Zainab Tufekci's newsletter, her Substack, because if you're cool yep. these days, you have a Substack in we which she yeah. usually expounds on a thing that she wrote. So today right. uh, she has a piece in the New York Times about how we are approaching most likely COVID's deadliest phase, which is, of course, the opposite of what we're experiencing here in the United States, Yeah, which is 2 million people are expected to fly this weekend. And, you yeah. know, like we're back, babies. Yeah. Um, and in and in fact, the, the virus is only getting worse in other parts of the world, as we know, including this increasingly terrifyingly transmissible new variant. She is calling for you know, every country to come together and come up with essentially a global Marshall Plan for vaccinations, not just waiving patents, which she says is great, but it's a little bit like thoughts and prayers if you don't help the countries that don't have the infrastructure to produce yeah. vaccines once you've waived the patents. And uh, she says that we are increasingly looking at a catastrophic end to the pandemic where we accomplish global herd immunity by millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions more people getting infected and dying. And she points out in the newsletter, this is not in the New York Times piece, but points out that if you look at a chart of deaths from AIDS, she says one of the greatest moral stains from our history jumps out. More people died of AIDS after we got the triple combination drug in 1995 that turned HIV oh, into wow. a chronic condition for those who had access to it. But almost all the deaths happened outside the few right. wealthy countries right. that could afford it, not until the mid 2000s were those drugs distributed globally? And did we start to reverse that trend? And we're about to do the same thing. Yeah, we just had then, like yesterday, our deadliest mm -hmm. global day for this coronavirus, right? Think about that yeah. for a minute. Right. I mean, the, the disconnect is so profound, right? The United States, the UK doing fine, reopening, talking about school coming back, mm -hmm. you know, heaven for sure. forfend, something else occur, but it probably won't because these vaccines are so good. And meanwhile, in the rest of the world, it, this is playing out in a truly yeah. horrific way, even though these basically bulletproof vaccines exist. And it really is a global moral responsibility and i would like to believe that humans are up for the task except that literally a lady just punched a flight attendant in the face on a southwest oh flight God. because she didn't want to put yeah. her mask on and like knocked out a yeah. bunch of her teeth and i'm having this moment where i'm like it's maybe crazy. america touch, is the worst and we should just bow yeah. out of this conversation because we are not in a good place well look there there is a straight line there is a straight line and I'm, I'm listening to Jonathan Swan's Axios podcast about the last days of Donald Trump in the White House. Absolutely fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, but Swan draws a straight line from the speech that Trump gave on election night to the events of January 6th. And there is a straight line to be drawn right now from what happened in the Senate today with the January 6th commission and that flight attendant losing two teeth. Straight line. Yeah, without a doubt. Straight line. Without a doubt, that line and, is the complete yeah. lack of accountability. Complete yeah. lack of accountability. Yep. 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 
and the and the rage that was created around this. I mean, this this bananas thing happened in Illinois, maybe, where the governor went out of town. Hold on, I gotta find this. Oh, like, this it was, is it was it was it was it was it was Idaho. It was Idaho. Oh, of course, it was, it was. amazing. Bless him. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. governor went out of town. And right. while the Republican governor was out of town, the lieutenant governor passed an exec signed an executive order forbidding yep. future mask mandates. I love this, by the way. I love these states that are forbidding any and all future mask mandates. And yep. apparently the vain hope that the next virus that comes along, like, won't be that bad. I mean, what are you yep. thinking? So well, signs this yeah. executive order. And then the governor comes back into town and is like, no, 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 no. This is what is happening in governments. Yep. The number of people who now believe yep. the, the core set tenets of the QAnon conspiracy, according to the New York Times, is something like the same number of in some religions in this country. Like 15% yeah, I saw that. Percent I of saw Americans that. now believe in this. Yes. That. Yes. <sighs> like I'm. Yes. I came here like I'm just going to try to talk about these stories. But in fact, I am just so riled up by this sort of the state no, of things. Because how do look, we move forward? It's it, it is bad and getting worse. It's bad and getting worse on the virus globally, right? In the United States, we're like, we're like fat, dumb, and happy, right? I mean, yep. here in LA, masks are off. It's all good. Kids are going back to school, all this stuff. And that's happening all across this country and has been for a time in some states. But in the rest, on the rest of the planet, in the rest of the planet, it's just, it's a different ball game, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And this is like uh, the state so, of America today, the thing that the, the, the house divided that we are in, to be clear, right. goes right back to the asymmetrical warfare that Russians are waging in terms of cyber attacks and also information yep. attacks. Like, yeah, it's all to be piece. clear, we have been programmed. It is all of a piece and we still don't totally know how to react. We really don't. No, no. Okay. That's why I keep drinking this gross drink. Yeah. I mean buy a fridge. Drew Drew Jostad, save us from ourselves. Yeah, help help us. <sighs> Friday brings us uh marketplace heartthrob Drew Jost Drew Jostad uh, and a game that he hosts <laughs> called Half Full, Half Empty. We are going to get him on camera one of these days. I'm just saying. Drew gives us the topics. Molly and I give our predictions. You see it on social like a week later. Uh Drew, ready to begin. Are you half full or half empty on ghost kitchens? Oh. Oh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So ghost kitchens are now a thing and have been like risingly throughout these pandemic, this pandemic. So mm -hmm. I did a feature this week. I went out to a ghost kitchen um, uh, facility, I suppose, in Pasadena. And ghost kitchens are uh, kitchens that provide not sit down service, but only delivery and or takeout service. And, and there's lots of economic things that we can talk about, uh, about those things with regard to labor force and footprint and all of those things. But the upshot is I got a breakfast burrito for 15 bucks that had tater tots in it. And I didn't need to eat again for 12 hours. Um, I guess that's sort of the, that's, that's, you the better story. not if it was that's a $15 really breakfast burrito. It, 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 I, it was probably 1500 calories. I swear to God. Uh, oh, oh, but you know what it was? Oh, here's why I got it. Sorry. I got it. I got this particular burrito because <laughs> it had, sorry. Well, you being my interlocutor now, it, it reminded me of I it because we've had this conversation. Uh, it had impossible meat in it. It had impossible sausage. Oh. And we have talked about impossible sausage. Right. Here's the thing though. It had freaking tater tots and avocados and everything else in it. I couldn't really get a sense of the impossible sausage. So it was a little overloaded and it was a little right. overwhelming. That's all I'm saying. Hmm, yeah. A little overpriced, just anyway, saying. Way, way overpriced. So look, honestly, yummy burrito. I'm kind of half empty on ghost kitchens because of uh, it, it disassociates, it dissociates rather, sorry, food from like humanity. It's very industrial. And, and I get that kind of now we all don't want to cook and we all just want to order and pick up and this and that, but it kind of bummed me out a little bit. So I'm kind of half empty. I am, although it kind of bums me out because it's just our sort of like slow and steady uh, evolution into Wally come to life. I'm still right, kind right, of half right, full. Right, right, right. Yeah, Are you? definitely. Oh, interesting. I'm a little still potentially half full on ghost kitchens only because I think that is in fact what people want and they might be willing to pay yeah, for it. For sure. 
for sure. They absolutely you know? won't. It's not ideal. It's, I think, and I think restaurants could end up becoming like a little more, I think this, that somebody talked about this on marketplace more than one time, but restaurants themselves could be coming, become more of an artisanal kind of boutique yep. experience where yep. you, you do pay more because frankly, to get people back into those jobs, they're probably going to have to start paying more. Right. They're going to have to start know. paying more. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I guess half all, I hate for Travis Kalanick fair. to be right about this, no, but fair. it's possible. That's fair. Yep. Yep. I want that. I mean, that True. burrito sounds good though. What's next? We're switching gears to climate change pressure on big oil. Oh. I love this. I love everything about this story. This is so fascinating. Yeah. Go. So fascinating. First of all, though, Evil Genius 007 in the YouTube wants to know if I've seen the pizza portal at Little Caesars where you order through the app and then you get a code and it opens a little door and the pizza's in there. <laughs> I do think that that I, I'm not even gonna lie. Oh, Although it involves no no human interaction, it's kind of depressing. It's sort of awesome. It's super futuristic. Um, okay, so in case you missed it, and I can't imagine that you did because everyone was talking about it. Exxon, yeah. in particular, Exxon Mobil had uh, activist shareholders win two seats on their board by convincing the other directors, in large part, that the Exxon Mobil that not that not only is Exxon Mobil, you know, complicit, partly responsible for climate change, but more yeah. importantly, that they are continuing to engage in a bad business long term. Yeah. And that's what I find so yeah. interesting about this is the argument that like fossil fuels are increasingly obsolete because the market is moving in a different direction. But yeah. I will say that as someone who has been like in kind of a bummer place for a while, a year, 14 months ish, I am surprised and encouraged by the pace of change that seems to be happening and the realizations around climate change. And I think that one of the things the pandemic has done is show people that the worst can occur hmm. and that's that maybe that's an a, ounce a, of a really prevention yeah. like matters. Yep. 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 So I'm half all yep. on this. The worst can happen. I think it's a really that's big exactly deal. Right. The, the worst, worst can, can happen. happen. Really good insight. Yeah. That's the title of our new podcast. Um, <gasps> yeah. I'm half. That's a really I'm good idea. Sure. Yeah, you know what yeah, we should probably do is another show. Nothing but time. Honestly, right? I mean, come on, nothing but time. <laughs> and and look, I mean, honestly, 8 p.m. doesn't get its money's worth out of us anyway. So come on, squeeze us a little. <laughs> Sorry, that's a whole that's a whole different thing. Anyway, Drew, what? Go, huh? Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it Amazon going. MGM. <laughs> oh my! Operation goodness. Fire Me up in here, still oh, in effect. Oh boy. Well, it's just still, still in fact. That's right. Look, I'm trying. I'm really trying, but nobody's listening. Um, it's been a lot. Amazon months. MGM. Yeah, right. Look, Jeff Bezos could have bought this company with pocket change from like his spaceship. Uh, I, Molly and I talked about this on Marketplace. Amazon is buying Amazon, a, a startup, not a startup, a, a new technology, new economy tech company is buying a hundred and something year old studio for its vault. And also because Netflix and stickiness of Amazon Prime, I, I'm half full, but honestly, I'm like half, meh, don't care. I'm a little mad, don't care. And frankly, I'm just yeah. going to indulge myself for one second in uh, the conspiracy version of this story, which is we all know that Trump essentially personally scuttled that big $10 billion Jedi contract oh, that yeah. Amazon was bidding for, and that that would have led to many billions in future government contracts. And there have been you all have these the stories about how, you, I'm sorry, you have to uh, the yes, contract. Yeah. you are totally right. So Amazon was bidding against Oracle and Microsoft and some other companies to essentially start to provide the cloud infrastructure for the Pentagon. The Pentagon wants to Pentagon, yeah. centralize up all its operations onto one cloud to be more efficient and tech savvy. Given the Russia situation, that sounded terrifying to lots of us. Nevertheless, this is the yep. plan. So Amazon was leading this bid, was like about to be awarded the contract, maybe even sort of had a handshake agreement to get this contract. And all of a sudden, Trump comes into office with his like, I hate Jeff Bezos in the Washington Post situation. Mm. And, all, and suddenly this that contract goes away. And after several months to a year, ends up getting awarded to Microsoft. It was extreme. Amazon sued because they were like, you totally interfered in this and it was political. And then a, a, a judge ruled that, you know, it had gone through the proper channels, but it was a big deal. And it is yeah, a long deal. lasting relationship with the federal government that now Amazon has lost out on. So there's been all this reporting that by acquiring MGM, Amazon will get 
uh, all of the back episodes of The Apprentice, including the unreleased tapes that during the 2016 presidential election, there was lots of rumors like that's where the grab him by the, you know, tape came from. And that now he owns this catalog. And so all these people were like, all they, like all these lawyers were interviewed being like, so would that contract still hold? Because there are contracts that say they couldn't be released. And I just, I am half full on imagining this as a super cold revenge play. Because even wow. sometimes I just like to indulge myself. <laughs> that is cray cray. That <laughs> is cray cray. Even if he just wants to watch them, he has them now. Oh, oh, jeez. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm half Good. full. Turns out I'm half full. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice tackle. Are yes. you half full or half empty on cable's highest paid chef, Guy Fieri? <laughs> Has a new contract. I'm oh. so over Guy Fieri. I'm empty. Could what? not be more empty. Yes. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, you Don't at me. Stop it. No, uh-uh. Uh, no. I'm, I'm, I'm all Guy Fieri all the time. Really? He's so great. He's such a good person. He has done so much good during the pandemic. He, He's like truly yes. helped people. Like, yes, he's got the bad hair Tr- and totally whatever. Fun. Also, he has great car collection. Great. Great car collection. All right. Could we... Could we be a little more superficial? I'm, I'm just, you know. All right. I, I mean, that was the also to he's done a bunch of good stuff. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, I just okay. All right. So look, my my limited okay. exposure to Guy Fieri is number one, the Food Channel, and number two, the show called what is it? Diners, Dives, Diners and Diamonds. <laughs> yeah, I, I never. I that was oh, so all right. So you know what's funny? There was a comment in the YouTube earlier about me being a curmudgeon. <laughs> So this is the this is my this is it. Hey, you kids get this off is my your lawn. moment. This is it. This is it. This is it. Yeah. Fine. I will abstain from this one. How about that? I will abstain. Y- y- no, man. Uh, Own your opinion. You got. Can this. I not abstain? You fine. Fine. I fine. fine. I just I I'm empty and I'm proud of it. There you go. Love it. There we go. All right, listener Jean Claude in Ontario wants to know how you feel about the big cat crypto coin. What is I, I, that? Which is Carol Baskin's cryptocurrency? I believe, you know what? I'm half oh, she, full on the idea tiger? that we is live she, in the worst timeline. Tiger? Yeah, from Tiger is King. Tiger yep. King thing? Allows yeah. people yeah, to uh, thing. buy things from the big cat rescue in cryptocurrency. I don't. So look, <laughs> I said on this podcast a, a number of days ago that I had come to think of crypto in a completely different way after listening to Chris Hayes and Joe Weisenthal on Chris Hayes' podcast. And I stand by that, but not for BS crypto, only for like actual legit crypto. So half empty. Did I tell you that my financial advisor is just calling the whole industry klepto? <laughs> right, yes. At this point, sure. it's really made me laugh. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't be more uh, sorry, empty no, on like, that scammer coming yeah. up with another scam. To yeah. scam people. Yeah. Good God. And and for the and, and and for the record right now, the granddaddy of crypto, Bitcoin, is at thirty-four thousand nine hundred fifty-seven dollars and sixty cents in the United States dollars, down from its high of sixty-four. So it's it's an asset class. It's arguably a pyramid scheme. You're waiting for the greater fool. It's not usable. I get the use case, but we're not there yet. The, uh, no. I mean. A story that I had in the rundown before I started ranting about the state of America today was the one about how Iran just banned cryptocurrency because it uses so much energy. It's causing blackouts across the country. Right. Yeah. I'm with Amber Bradshaw on this one. Hard pass. Hard pass. I'm Carol Bassler. Stupid crypto. Stupid. This is the worst timeline. This is the stupidest timeline. Nah, you know, I think we're all right. I think we're all right. I, I think, well, that's not true. Aww. There are a lot of things that are wrong, but, but you know, it's all good. It's all good. Thanks, man. Uh, okay. okay you're so right. you're right. Yeah. We're going to be okay. Yeah. It's, it's, we're, we're good. Although, you know, it's, well, this is, mind. this drink is getting better. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny how that happens? Also, my ability to speak in, in foreign languages <laughs> improves the more I drink, but anyway, that's a whole different thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. We're done. Yeah. We're going to leave now before Donatam gets in the slack and says, <laughs> cut it off, <laughs> cut it off. Please leave. Uh, Please we're leave. off on Monday because it's Memorial Day. Uh, we're back on Tuesday. Let me back up for a minute. If you if you are working Memorial Day, first of all, thank you. Uh, and if you're off, remember why. 
remember what it's about because that matters. Um, that is very true, Tuesday, especially in this moment. Yeah. Yeah. Tuesday, we're back with a deep dive on, look, this is going to be way more interesting than it sounds, I promise. Global <laughs> corporate minimum tax. It really matters. It's getting some traction. Janet Yellen, Joe Biden, the European Union, they're all talking about it. We will talk about what it is, how it might work, and whether it could conceivably put some of those foreign tax havens uh, out of business. Think like Ireland, the Cayman Islands, that kind of thing. Uh, your questions, mm -hmm. your comments, they come to us at makingsmart at marketplace.org. Hopefully by the time we're back on Tuesday, I will sound like a normal human being instead of somebody who's completely like sinusy and got a cold. Because I hate that. It's the worst. You sound a lot better than you think you sound. Make Me Smart is produced and directed by Marissa Cabrera. Thank you to our intern, Mark A. Green, who's doing great and even posted a really funny yes. story in the Slack. He's got potential, this kid. Social media producer, Mel Rosenberg. Uh, thanks to both of them for joining us this week. Our video producer is Stephen Beyond. Our social media intern is Emily McCune, who has also got a lot of hustle. So cage match. Erica Phillips writes our newsletters and makes me smart explainers. <laughs> <laughs> Today's program was engineered by our co-star, Marketplace hot, heartthrob, Drew Jostad, Ben Talladay, and Daniel Ramirez composed our theme music. Oh, I was going to say, so I saw a tweet from Ben the other day. He's actually in Sydney in quarantine in a hotel room with his wife and like two and a half year old daughter for 14 days. Holy cow. Wow. Donna Tam is a senior producer and the executive director of On Demand is Satar Nieves, neither of whom, as far as I know, are in quarantine anywhere. Oh, I'm just happy to know that Ben made it home. Yeah. Yeah. yeah really cool. Really cool. Yep. Yeah. So Australia's he's not like, messing around. Like, he's got like eight days left, probably, or nine days left by now. Yeah. Too bad there we, we can't send him some DoorDash. All right. That's right. Uh, Great show, okay. everyone.